Hello and welcome to today's episode of Objective Health. I'm your host, Erica, and joining me in our virtual studio is Doug, Elliot, Tiffany, and Damien in the background. Welcome all. Hello. 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 So continuing in the times of COVID-1984, <laughs> what has developed in the last week since we've talked about uh, the World Health Organization's uh, fight against meat, and now we're moving into even stranger territory. Uh, for our research this week, we started to look into Project Salus, tagging people and tagging food. And it's almost unbelievable, something out of some sort of utop dystopian yeah. sci-fi future. <laughs> but basically, uh, Project Salus is um, being launched by the Pentagon's Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, which was started in 2019, to serve as a clearinghouse for the military's ar artificial intelligence work. And Project Salus, named after the Roman goddess of safety and well-being, is right in the middle of that. And um, basically, I'm not a techie by any sense of the word, but uh, they're combining data from the Census Bureau, Medicare, hospitals, and projections about how the COVID-1984 pandemic is spreading and how to deal with supply chain breakdown. Now, of course, this is a lot of this news has been on military type websites, uh, just kind of rolling out information about how AI can be used as against well as tracking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a war against people. It, yeah. And uh, predictive models for where, quote unquote, shortages may occur. But when you start to look into this, it is Super creepy. Yeah. Super creepy. Yeah. So it's basically like they're using blockchain technology, which, you know, blockchain, everybody thinks about Bitcoin, right? Mm -hmm. But it's basically just a way of kind of distributing the information across multiple networks so mm -hmm. that everybody can access it. And be, I mean, I don't totally understand it because I'm, I'm not a techie either, but it's basically like the idea that this ledger or this information is everywhere at once kind of thing. And nobody can kind of fudge the numbers because then it won't match up with what everybody has, that kind of thing. That's my very basic understanding of it. So it's kind of just, it's, it's basically just a really extensive tracking system. And it's tracking people, and it's tracking food, and it's tracking, I don't know what else, everything. Military weapons, it's tracking, like, it's kind of like this is going to be the Skynet that like from the Terminator movies where it just has eyes on absolutely everything. And then it uses AI to predict different things that are going on. They even talked about how the Pentagon is using it to predict like social unrest in certain places. It's kind of like if their eyes are on stuff and they see, oh, we're, it's, they're, they're, they're having food shortages over here and there was just an incident that could uh, cause some strife, then they know that there's gonna be like some social strife in that area or something along those lines. So it's really like taking the whole tracking of everything to another level. Well, they kind of frame it as they're tracking like if a certain area might have a food shortage. Mm -hmm. So what can they do to mitigate that? But I think also <laughs> there's always uh, a, an underlying reason behind putting this technology to use. So. I don't think that they'll just be able to track a food shortage. I think that uh, they could possibly be able to create a food shortage. Like mm -hmm. say for instance, you know, there's some elites in some area or some technocrats who need their, you know, their chicken while everybody else eats fake, fake meat. They can find out where the chicken is and so city A will have a food shortage. Meanwhile, that food is going over to city B mm -hmm. where the technocrats will be able to eat it. So they can also create a food shortage. That's the first thing I thought of when they actually said what they are trying to do on the surface. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and it would be quite um, quite a beneficial thing in the mind of the elites, especially if there was some kind of, I don't know, you, you think of what's been going on in France, like the Yellow Vest protests or whatever, but you had something like that, like a genuine protest, a genuine kind of, let's say, an uprising or, or a revolt. Mm-hmm. Um, not one that's sponsored by George Soros, but, <laughs> but a genuine one. Um, mm-hmm. And people actually start protesting for yeah. genuine concerns. Uh, and say, you know, like we've seen over the past couple of weeks or, yeah, like past month or so, you've had like uh, groups of people in specific cities. Like it's not all around the, the country in the US, but say in specific cities, you've got groups of individuals where there's lots of protests. You could quite easily kind of cut off the uh, the food supply there, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Kind of like a punishment. Yeah. Well, exactly, yeah. And and if there were undesirable groups, you could. I mean, it, it sounds like what they're looking to do is have complete control over every tiny, tiny, tiny aspect mm-hmm. of the, the the entire supply chain. And so they could modulate or, or change one aspect of that, and it could completely divert resources to wherever they want it to go at whatever time they want to. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's again, it's quite scary. Um, mm-hmm. Because I think it's easy to ascribe uh, more power to these individuals than they actually have. But if we're looking at, <laughs> if they were to implement something like this, I mean, it's it's much like everything else that we've been talking about, especially over the past couple of months. Um, it seems that that would be just one extra level of control that they had over practically every single individual on earth. Mm-hmm. Um, and when that happens, you, you just want to hope it's in good hands. And I think oftentimes it's not. <laughs> Yeah, I think the DOD is not the hands that we want to be in, right? Exactly. (laughs) Because they do, they sell it in such a way that they make it sound like it's a good thing. You know, one of the ways that they're selling this whole thing is through um, food safety, right? And Mm -hmm. and food um, fraud. So basically, like, apparently there's a huge amount of, especially in the fish and seafood industry, there's a lot of... um, fraud that goes on like you know they'll sell you salmon but it's not actually salmon it's like some other kind of fish that's been dyed or something like that like there's a lot of that apparently so they're saying oh well this is a way that we can you know cut down on this and i mean on on the face of it it's kind of like well tracking food okay that's not that doesn't really sound that evil but it's really when you get into the 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 more the implications of it and what could actually be done and then you look at whose hands it's in it's like okay Mm -hmm. this is not they're they're selling this as something as it, but there's something coming in through the back door for sure. Most definitely. And it seems like this whole idea of innovation, which whenever that word comes up, it really is like a huge red flag Yeah. because that can mean anything. Like basically I even wonder if the whole toilet paper shortage in the beginning of March, cause that's when uh, project Salus was launched you know, they huh. said the DOD said we're moving at incredible pace, showing a significant amount of innovation, you know. So it's like, let's let's, um, you know, track the toilet paper supply and see what happens and see if we can get people to freak out and buy it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like predictive modeling about something. Because I, I remember thinking about all the toilet paper memes and everything. It's like, seriously, this is what people are preparing for? Like they're buying toilet paper? <laughs> but, well, I don't think they could have done any of that without the help of the media because they're yeah. showing all of these people just swarming the toilet paper on. Yeah. Well, I bet the media is, is part of the whole system. You know, mm-hmm. if they want to manufacture panic, then the media is integral to that. So, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, with this tracking system, they can track it down to the individual item in the store. Right. So they know what's on the shelf, what isn't on the shelf, what's just been bought. You know, th- from from the very beginning of the supply chain to the very end, so they know exactly how much there is of everything. So yeah, they could easily like you know, oh, there's uh, let's divert the toilet paper away from this city and uh, let's uh, get the media to uh, do stories on toilet paper shortages, and then we'll just watch the you know sit back and enjoy the show. <laughs> let's decrease the food going into this city and increase the guns. Yeah. And back to what you were saying about regulation, Doug, like people are, are, are definitely wanting to know now more where their 
food is coming from, what it's mm. being, you know, if it's got pesticides or herbicides or if it's been irradiated. And, um, you know, years ago, you remember when they came out with the grocery store card that like, oh, if you buy this, you get points and stuff. I mm -hmm. think they started collecting data on people's oh, purchases a Most long definitely. time ago. And then yeah. they were like, well, how can we use this data in – to our benefit and and people think oh well you know i've got this card and i can get discounts on this that and the other thing but basically now they have this ai technology that can sort through your last 10 years of food purchases mm -hmm. and what companies you support and what companies you don't and like tiff you were saying you know i mean if it gets to a point where you you know choose not to have an immunization or you don't wear a mask mm -hmm. in public then all of a sudden, maybe your access to food will be mm -hmm. denied. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It starts like at the top, like uh, maybe at the warehouses or things like that. And they can use this AI to see the inventory in particular grocery stores. And then, like you said, down to the individual. I know that there, if you go to certain grocery stores that have that little, you know, card where you can save this that however many percent off of your grocery bill you have to scan your card um, if you go to the self-checkout line and you don't have a card you can't check out <laughs> <laughs> really eh? yeah. uh, i've um yeah. well as long as we're kind of you know verging into tinfoil hat territory one thing <laughs> i was thinking about was okay so you know how there is all this talk about mandatory vaccination and everything, how you have to get the vaccine. Well, how easy would it be for them to slip something into the food chain and monitor exactly where it's going, knowing each individual household is getting a product that has some of this vaccination or whatever the case may be, DNA altering stuff. Mm. Yeah. Okay, that's my tinfoil hotness. <laughs> it's just kind of like, it's kind of like you know, if they, they wouldn't even have to get reveal. consent. Well, it was just kind of like, like how easy would it be for them to just stick it in the food? Is basically what I was saying. You know, yeah. pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, maybe. Yeah, especially you know, if they have control over every tiny little aspect of food. I mean, they want to tag food. They want to tag plants. They want to tag the microbiome of the soil. And yeah, that's the, another scary yeah. aspect of it, actually. Yeah. The fact that they're using, that they're discovering how to use the microbiome of the soil or the microbiome of every, any place to be able to track food or packages or whatever. Like, you know, they can analyze the microbiome of something on the surface and they can determine by comparing it to a database where that came from, what farm it came from, what warehouse mm -hmm. it went through, what grocery store it was sold at, probably even like whose hands it went through at any given time. I mean, it's amazing technology. Like, that is truly astounding. I mean, it's just in the development phase right now. Um, actually, Damien, maybe you could pull that up. It was a uh, Phylogen secures 14 million to bring transparency to global supply chains mm -hmm. through microbiome yep. analytics. Yeah. It's up. Um, oh, it's yeah. up, okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's amazing technology that they could actually mm -hmm. do this by analyzing the microbiome. They know exactly where it's been. Like that's stunning, but yeah, I think um, one of the lines in that article is they were saying, imagine being able to run a swab over the sole of your sneaker and figure out where that shoe has been. Yeah, I mean, some of it sounds like absolutely incredible. Maybe we can get into this later, but um, I can see. How if you have a product that is wrapped or in a package and has a barcode or a QR code or whatever they call them mm. on that package, that they could, it'd be a, a big feat to be able to do that, but they could be able to track it. But how do you track a fish or the pieces of a fish that go to different places or a peanut or a coffee bean? I still can't figure out how they would be able to inventory one single. Thing. Well, I wonder. I if have an it, idea. Okay, you go. You go first because I have an idea too. If it's a real bean, if it's a fake bean, that's a different story. 
Well, if it's genetically modified, which, you know, we've talked about a lot on this show and we've been reading about for time, then like with GMO technology, you know, they have little marker genes that they shoot in uh, Mm. to turn on and off genes. So they could very easily, like Doug was saying, have some sort of something in there, you know, at the nanotechnology level and everything is, is readable. At some mm-hmm. point, you know, I think that's why, I mean, when you start to look into the history of GMO, you, you read William Engdahl's book, Seeds of Destruction. It is so scary how mm-hmm. long they have been working on doing this kind of stuff to basically completely contaminate the entire food system with genetic modification and the soil. That's been a big one. Like once they contaminate the soil, there's no getting that that modification out of the soil. So with AI, it would become probably pretty easy to do just what you were talking about, Tiff. Like, mm-hmm. oh, well, we can scan the soil and it picks up, you know, who knows? I mean, yeah, I think that has something to do with it, though. The, I don't know why. Probably, I know I'm not a scientist. It probably could be. <laughs> they, th- the thing is, though, in that Forbes article, they were talking about how they can track every individual coffee bean, like each one that's picked. So I was thinking it must be some kind of like laser, microscopic laser tattoo system or something like that, where they can just Mm -hmm. laser imprint these individual things or something like that. Like, I don't know how, how else they could do it. I don't know. Well, when we did the inner... They could do it. It would still involve the use of 5G. Yeah, I was just going to say There's a big push to get 5G moved out to more rural areas where all the farms are, of course. So that way, their tracking system could work. Yeah. Question is, is this all really necessary? No. Well, most definitely for your safety, Elliot. (laughs) For your safety. I mean, what kind of... How many average people how many people do you know who who would want this like- well it depends on how they sell it right mm-hmm. i mean if they'll they'll sell it they'll say something like this right if there's ever a contam- a, a batch of uh, lettuce that was contaminated with e coli they can do a recall and they'll be mm-hmm. able to through the internet of things alert your fridge um every individual who has that lettuce that's contaminated from that batch so they won't have to do a mass recall and they won't have to worry about not reaching the people because they didn't see the news broadcast about the recall so there your Mm -hmm. fridge will be flashing warning at you the lettuce you have in your fridge is contaminated with e coli and everybody's gonna be so much safer and everything's gonna be so much better and that's how they'll sell it they'll sell it in those kinds of ways you know what i mean they'll say these things and i mean it's not that those things aren't true and yeah okay that's convenient it's good but it's all the other stuff that comes on top of that, which you don't need. Yeah, but like you said, Elliot, nobody wants it. Nobody cares. They just want to go to the grocery store, get their food, go home and eat it. But I think that they're going to sell it, like you said, Doug, the same way they sell everything with problem, reaction, solution. Yeah. They can create a problem. Let's say, oh, let's just uh, see if we can just poison this particular farm or this meat or whatever. <laughs> and people are going to demand more food safety and you know they're going to want their food to be tracked and know where they got it from because all the meat is going to different places we need to help the people so the solution is chips and your food yeah <laughs> chips and your chips yeah it, it <laughs> they uh they they will um appeal to the emotions right they'll yeah. they'll you know, they'll have a, a, a news at nine o'clock story laying out Jeffrey, who owned a farm or who 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 who, who nearly died from contaminated meat. Um, yeah. And and, yeah, and if Jeffrey's a, ch- a, a child, then all the all the better. Mm. I mean, and imagine how good it would be if you'd be able to find out if the steak that you're eating came from like a racist cow. Right. <laughs> You'd be able to track it back to a very specific cow and you find out that he's a racist and you'd be like, I'm not eating that. That cow was racist. <laughs> or know the individual potatoes that went into your bag of potato chips. Mm-hmm. Know exactly mm-hmm. where they came from, how big they were, what their name was. 
I mean, the level, whoever thought of this or whatever group of people or entity or energetic force, I mean, can you imagine the sick and twisted mind that actually needs this level of control over anything in order to be happy <laughs> and feel safe? Because when they say uh, safety and well-being, they're not talking about the safety and well-being of the average person. I think they're talking about the safety and well-being of the elites. They can have control over everything. They don't want the pitchforks to come out and have people stabbing them in their beds. So they think that this is going to be a way to keep that type of thing under control. But of course, they're going to fail in the long run. But it's so frustrating to have to go through it until the end. Yeah. And read about it and suspend disbelief. Like, no yeah. way, this can't really be happening. This is not really happening. <laughs> <laughs> Are we going to talk about Bright Seed also? Sure. <laughs> Well, I think this is another one of those West Coast uh, yeah, it's tech companies. San Francisco. Yeah, it all seems to be over around that area Funny where they're that. coming up with all this stuff. Uh, Bright Seed, they're going to use uh, AI to catalog the entire plant kingdom or the nutrients in plants. They aim to be able to do this within the next five years. Mm hmm so they're talking about how there's all this disease, type 1 diabetes and uh, obesity and people are ill and you need to merge food and medicine like we haven't heard that before. Like Hippocrates said, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. So it's, it, they make it seem like they're coming up with some kind of new concept, <laughs> like food has nutrients, like, oh, we didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but they want to, I think that they're studying, I mean, it's part of this whole control thing, but they're studying every minuscule compound of a plant and they're going to try and come up with a fake version of it to sell to the public. And mm -hmm. we all know fake versions are crap, but there's a couple of quotes I wanted to just put out just to alert everybody that this is what I think. <laughs> Are. <laughs> alert, alert. <laughs> this is what so they said thinks. that through its AI platform, Bright Seed brings to the table a molecular view of what's inside the foods we eat that has an impact on the biological systems in our body at a level of resolution we've never seen before. It would be almost impossible to do this physically. Imagine breaking down a grape into all of its molecules and then doing that for all foods we eat, says Elizondo, which is... Uh, one of the people who are uh, involved in this bright seed company. So it goes on to say that bright seed then controls, then controls the whole production process of the plant in question to ensure the presence of the nutrient down to how it's harvested and processed. It's now working with food companies on how to get its first ingredient into consumers hands, but it will likely be both a whole food ingredient and an extract version. So again, they're just doing it to help us. But well, we saw there. We saw that them doing that with the Slavisgrad seed bank. Remember years yeah. ago? Gosh, mm. I can't even remember how many years ago. But I think that was one of the beginnings mm. of trying to do just what you're talking about, Tiff. Like the, first they get every single seed of everything that's ever been grown and they store it in like a nuclear bunker vault up in the, uh, you know, middle of the Arctic. <laughs> and, then, and then they, they, I wouldn't be surprised if they started it then, like, mm -hmm. you know, uh, genetic mapping of the entire food system and yeah. Well, I have a question regarding all of this technology to track all of our food and all these articles that come out about how, you know, they're, they can do this and they can do that and they can track everything and it's going to be so great and it's going to keep everybody so safe. But how much of this is them just like, it's like a sales pitch almost like, or that they're flexing about how powerful and how smart they are and how tech advanced they are. Like really how successful is this going to be? Because most of the time when you read these articles, they don't 
mention or there's very little mention of what some limitations to this technology could be. They just make it seem like it's going to be 100% successful and they can carry it off without a hitch. But I think that part of all of this is like they're trying to wear down the public in a way or foster some kind of sense of powerlessness. Like I can't do anything. The technology is just too big. There's no way to escape it. And I might as well just roll over and die. But <laughs> I'm not saying that they couldn't do a lot of these things that they're saying, but realistically, I wonder how, how successful their efforts will be. Like, do they have as much power as they say that they have? I think they have a lot of money, you yeah. know, with all the venture capitalists and tech, you know, guys throwing tons of money at this, you know what yeah. I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It could also be not even necessarily discouraging people from rebelling, although I mm -hmm. imagine that would be part of it, but also just continuing to foster the idea that they're in complete control, mm -hmm. that um that you don't have to worry about anything you can just go about your life live your life as you normally would um the elite is is like the parent right they're taking care of you don't worry about a thing the government the government is here don't worry your pretty little you, you can you can see it all kind of play out at least here in the u.s with the the lockdowns and you know even those grocery stores were essential services like the whole shift for people to now order online like mm -hmm. uh, whether it's from whole foods or walmart and then you just go and pick it up and they're 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 providing this amazing service for you like you don't need to shop in the grocery store anymore you can just have everything picked out and then you just go and pick it up or even have it delivered now so it's mm -hmm. more of that internet of things that we've talked to in the past but like really integrating that idea of convenience like mm -hmm. oh it's not that big of a deal that you can't you know go grocery shopping anymore we'll just get all your groceries for you mm -hmm. i think that this is just modern day way of food rationing because right now i mean you can choose to have your food delivered and you could still go to the store but i think eventually that choice is going to be taken away where everything is going to be you have to order your food and pick it up or have it delivered. And then eventually you won't even be able to pick out which foods you get yeah. delivered to you. They're going to say, okay, you get one pound of ground beef to last you a week. You get five apples, you get a loaf of bread and that's it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Assuming you have your uh, immunity passport up to date. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or if you have your immunity password up to date, you might get some chocolate or something like that. A good, little, good little reward. You get bonus your shoppers points. reward. <laughs> yeah, shoppers. Your good citizen rewards. Today you get to choose from Kraft or Heinz. <laughs> <laughs> That's a choice. Only one choice a month, though. Use it wisely. <laughs> Uh, we laugh, but it's probably true. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I tell you, people will eat it up, you know? Oh, I saved so much time. I don't know. I know with me, I don't like to grocery shop. It's not a mm -hmm. thing I really enjoy doing, but I still do it because I like to read labels or, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But now it's like that is taken away from you. And what really made me see it is I went to Whole Foods the other day and half the store is just shelves of people's orders that they really? made online and i was like oh my gosh so it's really happening this is really happening this mm. is people are just doing this and it's you know they probably do it on their phone even you know yeah. yeah well if you go to a lot of grocery stores in the u.s like they'll have the uh the parking spaces like up closest to the store are reserved for order pickup mm. and there's at least like seven seven or eight spaces dedicated to order pickup only mm. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. They don't have any of that kind of stuff where I am, so it's mm -hmm. interesting to hear about these kinds of things. Like the curbside pickup doesn't really happen. Yeah. But they have it a lot in the UK as well. They do, eh? They do? Yeah. That's not surprising considering it's the UK, right? <laughs> We're usually the first to jump on board with the kind of authoritarian measures like that, you know, like 
<laughs> just take more of our power away. You know, exactly. just, it's typical British, isn't it? But it gives you more convenience. You have more time to, you know, uh, Don't stay even have at to home leave your house. and watch yeah. TV. <laughs> more time for Netflix. <laughs> But I'd encourage all of our listeners out there to check out uh, the Ice Age Farmer, uh, Christian over at the Ice Age Farmer. He has a lot of awesome videos on YouTube. This particular, his latest one is called Architecting the Beast System. You might want to wear a diaper <laughs> <laughs> while you're watching this one or a lot of his videos because, I mean, not that he's being uh, incendiary or anything. He's just reporting on what's happening. Mm -hmm. But when it comes, like for me at least, and maybe for all people, because we need food to survive, this is really like hitting you in your survival area of your brain. Like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, we yeah. may or may not have enough food to actually live our lives in the future. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it can be kind of anxiety inducing, but it's necessary to know so you can get prepared. You can... Uh, buy a little extra here and there. Don't have your groceries delivered, of course. Uh, you can start your own garden. You can hook up with some local farmers. There's always, I think that there's always a way around these things. Mm -hmm. They try to make like they're big and bad and all powerful. And of course, they do have a lot more control and a lot more money than the average person. So they can do a lot of these things that they say they can. But I think that there's always a way to work around the system if you're really crafty. Mm -hmm. And especially knowing now, like finding out about it now, so you can start to see those mm -hmm. little small incremental steps of how the takeover happens. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I'm with Tiffany. I encourage everyone, you know, farmers markets, those they're still not really tracking sales and purchasing. We don't have gift cards or, you know, the little shopper cards at the farmers market yet. And mm -hmm. also getting to know your neighbors and trading things, whether they have eggs or milk or, you know what I mean? Just more community involvement because those big AI tech things need a lot of fuel meaning people who are willing to share all their personal data you know so For now. maybe yeah so maybe just you know in your community in your area finding people that have those resources and supporting them instead of companies like whole foods amazon you know walmart sam's club all that you know just going back to local mm -hmm. so you all have anything else to share? I'm sure there'll be more updates on this as it progresses. It seems like that the the pandemic was a per perfect time to launch this operation, Project Silas, under the guise of everyone freaking out about a virus and mm -hmm. take more control over the food system slowly, mm -hmm. or the entire supply chain system really, yeah. slowly, incrementally, step by step. So. Yeah, they always uh, they always make use of a good um, disaster, right? Mm -hmm. what's, what's the phrase? You know, that, never take... let a crisis go to waste. Yeah, never let a crisis go to waste, kind yeah. of thing. It's probably been in the pipe pipeline for years, right? Mm -hmm. Just been yes. frothing at the mouth, jump, waiting for an opportunity to jump on it. Whereas now they've, you know, this COVID has been uh, quite convenient in many respects. And that's just the things we know about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, as I said, we'll keep you all posted as things develop. Maybe they'll flop. Maybe their wishful thinking won't come to happen for them, but you never know. It's good to just keep up to date on it. So nobody has anything else. Thank you to my co-hosts. Um, and Damien in the background. And if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe. And we hope to have another informative, interesting, and even scary at times topic coming up. <laughs> so thank you all and uh, have a wonderful day. Bye, Bye. everybody.